Greetings watch lovers and welcome to Watches in the Wild. Today I'm coming at you from the city of Schaffhausen in the most northern part of Switzerland. All around me you can see the beautifully preserved old city with its decorated fountains and buildings. Naturally then we are going to talk about the watch which is produced right here in Schaffhausen. In fact inside the very building you can see right behind me. Now you may have already guessed it by now, we are talking about the International Watch Company or IWC in short. The word iconic is rather overused these days. Being employed to describe what feels like every third watch or so, it has effectively lost all or most of its meaning. The Submariner is iconic, but then the GS Snowflake is as well and the BB58 is a so-called modern day icon, they say. I will try not to use this word myself, even though it could and should be argued that the IWC Portuguese chronograph is indeed just that, a watch representative of its brand and with a good amount of time-tested fame to its name. Little history lesson while we check out Schaffhausen's most famous landmark, the Munot, which was built as part of the city defense in the mid-1600s. You can actually visit it for free, so make sure to check it out uh, when you visit Schaffhausen. Archetypal as the Portuguese may be, one cannot say that it is representative of the time when it was created. Men's wristwatches up and until the 1990s were around 35 mm in case diameter. Compared to the Portuguese, which measured a ginormous 41.5 mm when it was first delivered in 1939, half a year before the start of World War II. The unprecedented size was due to the pocket watch movement inside the watch, which, as per the request of two Portuguese watch sellers, should rival the accuracy of marine chronometers. Marine chronometers were used to determine a ship's position and thus had to be super accurate all the time. The first customer of the Portuguese, by the way, didn't come from Portugal, but the, the guy was an Ukrainian watch wholesaler based in Odessa. It took another three years until the watch, reference 325, was finally delivered to the guys from Portugal who ordered it. The delay likely being a result of the disruptions caused by World War II. The size of the Portuguese chronograph with its 41 mm closely resembles the then record-breaking diameter of reference 325, but stays well within the bounds of two days taste. Now two days taste may not be my taste, but I think the space is well taken advantage of here and actually needed for the subdials to remain legible at a glance. Clearly cutting off the 12 and 6 numerals helps in enlarging those subdials and achieving that goal of legibility. Now I'm not a big fan of how the 6 is cut off in a way that makes it look like a 0, frankly, but that is only a minor critique. All in all, the watch is a masterclass in how to feature a complication without visually overloading the dial. Granted it only measures up to 30 minutes, I have a hard time thinking of another chronograph which is as clean, as easy to read and as elegantly straightforward as this watch. At the same time there isn't too much negative space with the subtiles in the vertical being counterbalanced by the two lines of text on the horizontal. The outer track to tell the elapsed seconds is wisely pushed all the way to the edge thus being on another plane than the dial and being visually distinct from it. Even though it is there, it in no way clutters the dial. It's rather hard to achieve this balance of not too much and not too little. And IWC pulled it off beautifully here. I also love the applied blue numerals, although examined up close, I wish they would be a tad bit more sharp and refined. We are not quite talking Grand Seiko level of obsession with tiny little details here. In the same vein, the polishing of the case is frankly a bit underwhelming. It is light years behind that Japanese brand and not quite up to par with a brand like Rolex either. But then again, design beats execution every time in my opinion. And the design here is a total home run. It doesn't scream, here I am, look at me, yet it draws curious looks anyway. One might say it is stereotypically Swiss, 
restrained and humble, yet competent and convincing. To conclude, a word about the movement inside this watch. Since this is an older version, it houses the Valtrue 7750, slightly modified by IWC. Current versions are equipped with a column wheel in-house movement, which can be observed through the display case back. While I would prefer the in-house movement over the Valju, I have to say that operating the pushers feels fantastic. Yes, the initial push needs to be rather firm to get the chronograph going, but once it is activated, stopping and resetting it is a pleasure. And for all of you movement nerds, my friend who was kind enough to let me borrow this watch didn't have to service the movement for an astonishing 16 years. The Valju may not be the fanciest of movements, but it does its job, does it well and does it for a seriously long time. And of course, it can be serviced not just by IWC, but by any competent watchmaker. Though one rarely ever needs a chronograph, during the time of this watch I never did and I was actively looking for use cases, it is a lot of fun to play around with. Being able to measure time, make visible and gain some control over what otherwise is just happening to us is like a romantic fantasy realized. When I push the stop pusher, I may not stop time, but I materialized, turned into a physical distance some of its ineffable flow. Which, if you think about it, is kind of amazing. Let me tell you, after three days of it, it wasn't easy handing this watch back to its generous owner. It was a pleasure to wear, endlessly satisfying to look at and a lot of fun to use. And yes, for lack of a better word, it was and is and will remain an icon, just like the Moonot. Now feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Your support is greatly appreciated and helps me out more than you might think. Goodbye and see you again soon.